cross just symbolizes God. The cross represents the ghost and the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ. What it symbolizes is that, that Jesus came to earth, he died oh, on the cross, and he forgave us for all our sins. Christianity, Jesus. The cross just represents God and Jesus for me. Sacrifice, yeah. life. It symbolizes that God, I mean, Jesus gave his life up for us so that he can free us from sin, and we have to thank him for that, you know? The crucifix like symbolizes Jesus and how he died for us. It's a representation of uh, what Jesus went through. When God sacrificed himself for us, that he like went on the cross for us so we could live. It symbolizes like, how God like, gave his life away. A cross symbolizes for me probably believing in God. My belief in God and just my religion in general. The cross is something many of us see in our everyday travels. Maybe we wear a cross or go to church, see crosses in our Catholic schools, in our room, or have a pin on our backpack. The cross is an easily recognizable symbol all over the world and means we have a shared understanding with others. But aside from symbolizing our salvation, aside from having a place in history, the cross in itself suggests a center point. A meeting of heaven and earth, a cross God calls us all to embrace as part of our faith journey. Embracing the cross, that's what we'll be talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Abe. And I'm Kristen. And this, and this is, is Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. Many of the teens on the street recognize the cross as central to Christians and the universal symbol for Christianity worldwide. We'll talk to them more in a few minutes, as well as meet our studio guests. But first, let's meet our spotlight guest, Father Joe Jacob, the Catholic campus minister for Ryder University and chaplain at Notre Dame High School in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. He'll share with us what the cross means to him and how it is an important part of our Catholic faith. Let's meet him now. The cross for me really means the love of God made real. I think a lot of times we hear about the love of God, but we have a hard time really understanding what that means. I think when we look at our Lord's life, we really see the cross was his love taken really as far as it could have gone. There's nothing more that God could have given. He gave everything that he possibly could have till the very bitter end, till he gave his life. We talk about the difference between the cross and the crucifix, the empty cross without our Lord's body on it. Jesus triumphed over sin, he triumphed over death, and that he was victorious, was in heaven with his Father. When we think about the crucifix, think about our Lord Jesus, his body actually on the cross, the vivid sign and symbol of the passion, the suffering, and what he really endured out of love for us. When we're baptized, we get the imprint and the seal of the cross on us, which means that Forever, our souls, you know, we're body, soul, we got a body, arms, hands, feet, all that kind of stuff. And we also have a soul that we can't see, a soul that's invisible. There is a permanent mark left on our soul at baptism. And that permanent mark is our union with Christ, our being brought into a relationship with Him. Even when we sin, even when we kind of wander away from what God wants for us, even when we're in a state of mortal sin, uh, which really cuts us off from the grace of God, even when, you know, we go that far, that we still bear that mark, that seal, that permanent sign that we are a follower of Christ. We're a disciple of the Lord, but it's a true mark, a true imprint upon our soul that we do belong to the Lord. I really like what Father Jacob said, you know, talking about how strong a symbol the cross actually is in baptism. Yeah, definitely, and the, the sign of the cross has a role to play in every single one of our sacraments as well. Let's see what our studio guests have to say about this topic. Okay, they are Caitlin, Justin, Annie, Rachel, Kalechi, Allie, and Justin. So where do you see crosses and what special meaning does the cross have for you? I go to a Catholic school, so like every classroom I walk into, I see a cross near the ceiling. And to me, it's like a reminder about like how much Jesus had to carry and like for me to be thankful for what, everything I have. My grandparents used to live with us, so we have crosses from um, them because they brought in so many crosses. And when I see a cross, for me, it's kind of a symbol of selflessness and sacrifice. So maybe if my mom comes up to me and says, oh, we're gonna go visit some relatives or something that I really don't wanna do, it's just a reminder to me that those things are so little and to give it up because God gave up so much for us. Yeah, I know, I always see this cross in my parents' room. When I say goodnight to my parents, my dad has a rosary that has a cross. And I always see that, and I love seeing crosses um, on top of like the church steeples in the sky, because it just, it's just a reminder that, like, I don't know, it, it just makes me look up and say, like, wow, like, he's, he's always there. 
And um, I think the cross reminds me that Jesus loved us so much that he gave up his life for all of us. And I think that's really big because there's only a few people in your life who would do that for you. And that's a, that's a really big thing to do. Yeah, for me, seeing a cross reminds me that Jesus is always with me, watching over me, so I don't have to be afraid. And one thing I always notice is when you see the crosses on the side of the road, like if someone's been killed in a car accident, and I know um, in my church a couple years ago, there was a boy who was um, a freshman in high school and was hit by a car and died. And I didn't know him personally, but I knew a lot of people that did know him and like how much it you know, shook people up. And so like, I just think that it's such a good memorial when you have that. It's like to remind you that it's like they're with Jesus, that even though it's something really tragic, that you know, that they'll be in heaven. I went to Catholic school for every grade that I was in. So every room had a crucifix in it. And that always reminded me of like how that's why we're here. We're here to learn about our faith. We're here to be taught how to live our life like Jesus would want us to live. Yeah, I went to Catholic school too, and I also live at a Catholic home, and I also go to a Catholic church. So yeah, like just about anywhere I go, there, there's crucifixes. And for me, a cross is sort of a meditative symbol. Like whenever I see one, like it helps me to focus on what's at hand and my life. It's hard not to notice the use of crosses in popular culture. Sometimes it's used to make a fashion statement or show solidarity with a group. But are crosses always worn for the right reasons? Next, we ask the teens on the street if they wear crosses. And if it means something to them that is more than just jewelry. I do wear a cross and I've worn it for the past 11 years. And I've worn it ever since my grandmother had passed away because a friend of ours of the family had gotten it and I wore it the day that she had passed away and it kind of makes me feel that, that she's with me all the time and God's helping wash over me to keep me stronger for her. It means like you believe in God, you believe in Jesus. I mean if you're going to wear the cross for like decoration it's not like it's pointless. Well for me it would be a piece of jewelry since I'm not Christian. Well I don't really wear one but if I would it'd be a religious thing. So I wouldn't wear it if it didn't mean anything to me. It has religious significance because like it's our God. It means so much more to me than just a piece of jewelry. It's like someone gave their life up so that we could restart like the whole world and how everything would change just because one person decided to die for us. The cross has religious significance to myself because it symbolizes like that I have a religion and that people know that I like believe in Jesus. I would wear a cross for more of a more of a faith kind of stature. Other people may wear it for. Uh, you know, the swag. My cross is not really jewelry, it's a tattoo, and it means a lot to me. If I wear a cross, the significance would be like my beliefs in God and knowing that wherever I go, God will be with me. And it's not just a piece of jewelry, it means something. Whenever I wear a cross, I, I use it as like a symbol to signify what I am. And I think like people shouldn't just like mistake that for a piece of jewelry. They should know that I'm wearing it because I'm proud to be what I am. It's both, like I wear it because it looks nice. And then Jesus, like, it reminds me of Jesus. It has religious significance because it like shows people that I believe in Jesus and that what he did for us was right. I really liked what, that, what one of the teens said on the street. She said, it shows who I am. And I think that's where I wear, why I wear a cross. Um, I don't wear it to like show it off. I don't wear it as a piece of jewelry. I wear it because it does have meaning to me. And it, it's just a reminder that God's always there. And it reminds me daily that I'm his and to do the right things in life. And Jesus said, take up, take up his cross and come follow him. So I use my necklace as a sort of cross for myself. And every time I, I swerve from the path, I just like look at the cross and think, Jesus did so much for me so I can just do this little for him. And it's nice and stylish too, and it matches with my earrings, so. <laughs> yeah, um, I used to wear a cross necklace that I got from a Catholic men's rally. And um, I went to confession there. And when I was there, uh, the priest that I was confessing to saw my necklace and he was like, um, I'm going to bless this for you and what I want you to do is every time you're about to do something wrong, I want you to look at it and remember how Jesus died for you. I also used to wear a cross around my neck. It reminded me that Jesus is with us wherever we are and all the time and he died for us on that cross because he loved us, not just because it was something that he was told to do. I had this little like pocket-sized cross that I always keep with me and um, when my sister lived at home, before we went to sleep every night, my mom would like make the sign of the cross on our heads and say, Lord bless you and keep you. So my sister found crosses for us, like these are the little pocket ones that say, Lord bless you and keep you. So I always keep that on me and like I'd have it in my pocket at school and during the day if I was like, 
you know, having like a stressful moment or something bad happened, I would hold that cross and remember the love that Jesus has for me, like through my family and that he showed on the cross and not, you know, to pray to the object, but just as a reminder that Jesus is always there. I also like to wear a cross or like some variation of it. Like recently I've been wearing this necklace that has the three crosses on it to represent you know, Jesus' cross and then those of the two criminals who were crucified next to him. And I just think it's such a good reminder of like the way you want to live your life, you know, like rather than being like the one criminal who was so bitter about what was happening to him, you know, it's like the other criminal was, you know, trying to ask Jesus, you know, to remember him when he, he came into his kingdom. And so it's like, that's the way I want to live, you know, like to when you're suffering, you know, to, to just, you know, try to live your life in a way that's going to bring you to heaven. But the cross is also a symbol of pain and hardship, not only in the life of Jesus, but in our lives as well. Embracing the cross in this sense can be quite difficult, especially when our first reaction to any sort of pain or suffering is to run away. But as Father Jacob explains next, sometimes we need to endure hardship in order to see deeper purpose behind our suffering. I think we have a tendency to run from pain, to run from things that are hard in life. To embrace the cross means that we know that if we endure this hard moment without running away from it, God is going to reveal something in that. You know, I always love watching kids at Notre Dame High School where I'm chaplain or here at Ryder University where I'm also chaplain. When they're in baseball practice or football practice or basketball practice, or whatever it is, you know, they have to give so much of themselves in that moment. And even though it's difficult when they're going through it, even though they're sweating and it hurts and they probably wish they were sitting on a couch doing nothing, they keep kind of going through that because they know that it's for a purpose, it's for a reason. And so I think to embrace the cross means that when we're going through moments of suffering, and sometimes, you know, suffering comes, other people doing stuff to us, something we don't even have control of, and we see the purpose that God has for it, we see the plan that God has for it, and we really see the deeper meaning behind the cross, which is a real union with Christ on the cross. The cross has two shapes, you know, first is the vertical part of the cross pointing upwards to God, and then you have the horizontal part of the cross, which is the sign of us being one body in Christ, connected with one another. In a very real way, it connects us to God. Jesus himself bore the cross. Every time that we have some mark of the cross in our lives, we're really intimately connected with God. Everyone does have the cross in their life in some way. And so I think when we're kind of undergoing our cross and we do feel alone, in that moment we really see that we're not alone because A, God is with us in the midst of our cross, but also that everyone is carrying some cross in their life. And so it really gives us a solidarity, I think, with other people. I look at the cross when, whenever I'm in discomfort, like if it's a really hot day or we have to do something in gym class and it's just, it's like difficult, like, uh, and I'm uncomfortable. And I think, wait, Jesus died on the cross. Like, talk about discomfort. Like, that's the ultimate discomfort. It puts things in perspective. It reminds me that if he could do it on a much bigger level, I could surely surpass this. My middle school religion teacher used to tell us, if he brings you to it, he'll bring you through it. So when I see the cross, I think back to that saying, and it just gives me the strength to move on and really feel like comforted and not be so nervous. When my grandmother passed away, my family went through a really big split. I really hadn't, haven't talked to any of them in over two years. In the last year, I tried to get back in touch with my one cousin that I was really close to. And um, as we started getting closer, she brought up the topic um, of the whole issue and she started pointing fingers and saying, you know, it was your family's fault, it was all this fault. And, you know, I really had to look to the cross to remember, you know, the whole symbol of love. And I went back and I said, you know, let's forget that. Let's, you know, move past that and let's remember that we love each other and that's all that matters. You're my family. And, you know, looking at the cross really helped me with that. When uh, my grandfather died a few months back, I looked to the rosary that I keep above my bed every night and I started praying that. And then after hearing what everyone else was saying, as I was suffering through my grandfather's death, now I realize that Jesus suffered too, and that's what the whole rosary explains. The cross reminds us of Christ's love for us, that he gave up his life to save us. What else does the cross remind us of? That's what we asked the teens on the street. Let's check it out. When I see the cross, my first thought that comes to my mind is God. It could show, uh, you know, what, what someone can do for someone else. Remind you that God is always with you. I think wearing it helps us 
believe in God more, you know? I think it would help our relationship with God by just like always having him with us and showing that you believe in him or care about him so much that you would wear a piece of jewelry to show your beliefs. We can embrace it by hanging it up in our house and wearing it and just believing in it. I think you should wear it wherever you go, like not as a piece of jewelry and also maybe by like praying more to him just so you can get closer. We can embrace the cross by um, wearing it more. By wearing it more often. Is the cross only a reminder of Jesus' death or can it remind us of a way to live here and now? One of my best friends, we were in this big argument about religion and it ended up her saying for me to go to places after I died. It was really hard for me to forgive her, but look at Jesus. He forgave all of us and all of our sins, so why can I just forgive her? So yes, the cross, like, it's a daily reminder of how I should forgive others no matter what, because Jesus always forgives everybody else. The thing that gets me the most about Jesus' crucifixion is he had the power to stop all of it, but he allowed it all to happen. I mean, I know if I was Jesus, I would have probably been zapping people with lightning bolts or something like that. I would not have allowed that to happen to me. Can't say I'm that strong. But he definitely died the way that he lived his life, which was giving. He gave up his life in the end. He made the choice to die for us. It just goes to show you that, you know, sometimes when we have pain and suffering in our lives, and there, there are times we have the power to stop it. You know, we can just walk away from the pain, walk away from the suffering and the sacrifice. But I think what Jesus is trying to say to us through his death is that sometimes you have to tough it out. You know, sometimes you have to go through the pain and the suffering in order to become a stronger person in the end. Yeah, I think the cross is um, the ultimate symbol of love. Like I said before, he loves us so much that he did this for us. And he loved us back then and he loves us today. And I think when I look at the cross, I just think like, wow, that's, that's love. You know, we all think we know what love is and we do, but this is, this is true, true love on the cross. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, 23, Jesus tells us, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Jesus is calling us to embrace our daily sufferings as a way to grow closer to God. This allows us to understand, even in the smallest way, the incredible love Jesus had for us. That he would endure the most horrific pain and be put to death on a wooden cross. Next, Father Jacob discusses how Jesus abandoned himself to the Father out of love for all God's children. And how all of our small crosses, the hardship of each one of us, is connected to his larger cross. They say that when our Lord was on his cross, he saw each one of us individually, and he saw each one of our sins individually. And when he was going through all that pain on the cross, he was doing it out of love for us. When we talk about God dying for love of us on the cross, it can sound a bit generic at times, and it can sound a bit, well, we're living 2,000 years after him, what does that really mean? I just love that sense that from the cross, the Son of God, as he was offering himself to the point of not being able to give himself any more, that he saw each one of us, and he knew what he was dying for. He was dying to show us that we are so loved by God. There was nothing that he would hold back in giving himself to us. Anytime we're experiencing a small cross, it's connected to that bigger cross of Christ. I remember being about a year or two into the seminary and really wondering if I could really give up marriage for the rest of my life. Is that something I can do for the rest of my life? And it was really hard. I mean, it was a real tough moment, really arguing a lot with God, talking to God a lot and, you know, asking, you know, God, is this really what you want from me? Um, they used to have a crucifix in my room at the seminary. And I remember just kind of looking up at that crucifix and always seeing how our Lord just abandoned himself to God's will. I think when I was going through that moment of struggle, can I do this, can I not do this, am I gonna be able to live this life without getting married and stuff? I think just that cross was so clear that if I just abandon myself to the Father's will, if I just really give myself completely over to God, that he's really gonna give me the strength to kinda of get through those moments. You know, looking back, I see what a great gift celibacy is. You know, some of the things that I thought were gonna be so hard, such a big cross in my life forever and ever, really see that God's the one that gives me the strength to really carry that cross. One time I had to embrace the cross. I had to forgive myself. It was when my grandfather had passed away. We were in the hospital and I didn't get to say anything to him because it hadn't quite hit me that he was going to die that day. And I wasn't even in the room when he passed. I was getting lunch. So I really had to look to the cross and realize that he was up in heaven now and I could talk to him anytime I wanted. 
and I really forgave myself for not being there. A while ago, I was in a relationship with somebody, and you know, the breakup was very devastating and painful, and the minute it happened, I looked to the cross, and I knew right away what I had to do. I was like, you know, I can't be angry or bitter or gossip or try to get back at this guy, you know. I had to love him like Jesus and just be forgiving. And part of me was saying, this isn't fair, I didn't do anything wrong, but you know, Jesus didn't do anything wrong, he was innocent. And he died on that cross for us, and he, all he tells us is do things out of love. And it was so difficult, but in the hardest times, I just looked to the cross, and it gave me strength. And I know without Jesus, it wouldn't have happened that way. And now I'm friends with the guy again, and everything's great, and I know that this is the road Jesus wanted me to take and follow his example on the cross of love and forgiveness. Yeah, I think forgiveness definitely can be a challenge. For me, I, my brothers sometimes get on my nerves. They take my stuff, like little random kind of things that sometimes put me over the edge. But ultimately, I end up forgiving them, and I would sacrifice anything for my brothers because I love them so much. But it's just those little moments where you really just got to look to the cross and say, God, just help me to forgive this so we can get back on good terms and we can all be a family again. Connecting to God is a daily part of Christian life. This might mean going to Mass or praying a rosary. But on many days, it means talking with God, reading the Bible, listening to what God is saying in our prayers and reflections. Connecting to God is most immediate when we receive the Eucharist but it also happens when we see God in the things around us. And when we take a moment to pray. Let's go back to the teens on the street where we ask them if they find comfort in embracing the cross. And how praying to God has given them strength during difficult times. My grandma gets these bracelets, the bracelets that have like the little um, crosses on it, symbolizes like that there, there is something that could help us and there's hope for people that don't have like anything left in their lives. It's like a feeling that Jesus is with you. When you see the cross? My mom likes it a lot, so yeah, it's in my house. It's in my house, it's all over my house. My mom's very religious. Honestly, a lot of people I know don't really believe in all that stuff, but when it comes down to it at the end of the day, like when they're, when something really is going wrong, they pray to God. When I see the cross, it like, it, com it comforts me. It gives you a lot of faith. It definitely helps me, like when I'm feeling sad or something, I pray, you know? So how does reflecting on the cross help you in your prayer life? Reflecting on the cross helps me in my prayer life because when you look at the cross, you see Jesus and how he's suffering. And you can remember that even your sufferings, they are just as valid as anybody else's. And it can help you put things like in perspective. We all know that um, Jesus died on the cross for us. So at the end of the day, when you're having a horrible day, like I sometimes have, you know that Jesus will always be there because he died for us. So just pray to him when you're troubled or you're stuck. When I'm kneeling down and praying in church and I look up at that cross and see his open arms, it just makes me feel like I'm his and it, it gives me a sense of comfort when I pray and a sense that he's there and he's listening to what I'm saying. Being part of Christ's body on earth is modeled for us by his body on the cross. His arms opened, outstretched, embrace us all, the whole world. We can also embrace the world one step at a time. In our neighborhoods, this may mean helping the neighbor shovel snow or by volunteering for a food drive. It could be helping at a shelter or donating your lightly used clothes to some teenager you don't know. Being Christ's hands is hard work, but reaching out to the people on each side of us has the amazing result of connecting us back to the vertical, finding God in others. Finally, Father Jacob shares with us how young people can look to the cross for guidance. And how as faithful Christians, we can be a beacon for those struggling just to find a relationship with God. I think young people have great potential to bring the sign, the mark of the cross in the world today. There's a tendency to kind of run away from things that are hard and difficult, and it's you know not always easy to make sense of that. I think that's why a lot of young people get caught up in drugs and drinking a lot. It's kind of this attempt to escape the things that are really hard for them. High school can sometimes be some of the toughest years of a person's life, you know, when you feel rejected by your friends, and you broke up with someone you really like, and you don't really know how you're gonna get over that, or maybe just something happened at school, something's going on at home, when you're in those moments, you know, it seems so tough. When a young person really is connected to Christ, then they can kind of be the sign for other people that even though life may be tough, you don't have to run away from those painful moments. God will show you the bigger purpose and really the bigger perspective behind those crosses. It's so hard to understand how suffering fits into life, how there could be any greater purpose in suffering. But when you have the eyes of faith, we know we're not alone in that moment that we believe in a God who was completely innocent, 
and yet he endured stuff that was so hard. We believe in a God who never sinned, never did anything wrong, and yet he allowed himself to go through so much suffering, so much pain. When Pope John Paul II died, he was very frail. We could hardly communicate anymore. He was in so much physical pain, and a lot of people kept saying, why doesn't he just resign? He's too sick, he's suffering too much. And you know, I think Pope John Paul knew Christ was still calling him to this great mission, that he was really becoming this symbol and sign for the world. That's that suffering is not outside of God's plan. You know, I really agree with what Father was saying about, you know, how having faith helps you so much through suffering. I've been really fortunate and blessed that I've never had to go through the death of a really close loved one or, you know, like really other bad circumstances. You know, but like even with little things, you know, like if you know that you're having a rough day or, you know, if like you have something ahead of you that you're really not looking forward to, I feel like it just helps you so much to be able to just like look to God and be like, get me through this, like help me out. Or, you know, even if it is rough to offer it up. It's not always easy to follow our cross, but we have to realize that we can ask him for help and he calls us to look to him for guidance, but we just have to learn to take time out to do that. Yeah, just like Father said, it's so much easier to run away from our problems, but instead God wants us to run toward Him, and He really wants us to embrace our cross. And, you know, if we're open to Him, He's always open to us, so He'll help us get through anything we're going through. Embracing the cross of Christ is living with arms open to others while being in relationship to God. And through others, we find God. And through our relationship with God, we are open to others. This is what it means to bear the mark of Christ as a symbol of how we choose to relate to people in the world around us with courage, compassion, and love. So how do you embrace your cross? We'd love to hear from you. Contact us at realfaithtv.com or share your thoughts with us on Twitter. And we'll leave you today with this prayer. Christ, help us be your hands and feet on earth as we imitate you. Help us embrace the cross as a sign of our lives, connecting us to God and others every day. May our eyes encounter you in the people we embrace May our hearts be open to love as we take you as our model of love. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless. <laughs>